已经做了六十六了。这里是第二代啊，算起来第三代，第三代，第三代。然后工工就开始做了，啊，要换四十零。七十年了，哦，像你们是代代替他第二代卖鱼了。我们有有有祖先在那边，祖先啊，公公婆婆他们在那边。哦，对、okay, 啊，对、okay, ，像清明节没有出来，清明节就有啊，临时没有。Located in the heart of Malacca town, Bukit China or San Bao Shan is the center of the local community. At 148 meters tall and consisting of three peaks, Bukit Gedung, Bukit Tempurung, and Bukit Tinggi, Bukit China is an important entity for a community that lives in the shadow of this historic hill. This place, being in Malacca, exhibits a climate typical of the tropics with high humidity, an average daily temperature of around 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, and experiencing heavy rainfall. There is relatively low wind throughout the area, except for the peak of the hills. Bukit China was so named because of the princess of the Ming dynasty, the legendary Han Li Po, was betrothed to Sultan Mansur Shah. In 1685, Captain Li Wei Jing bought Bukit China and dedicated the hill as a pro bono endeavor for the burying of Chinese forefathers, later handing it over to the management of the site to Cheng Hun Ping Temple. While the hill is only for burying those of Taoist, Confucianist and Buddhist faiths, there is a small enclave of Muslim graves lying near the foot of the hill. Bukit China is the final resting place of around 1,200 people, with the earliest tomb dating back to 1622. Today, Bukit China has been sealed, and no longer are there any new additions to that number. It has since become a landmark for the community. Activities such as community gatherings, jogging and many more takes place on this sacred hill. This is no ordinary graveyard. Lying beneath the shadow of the hill is the Bukit China community. Originally occupied in the early 17th century by Futian, Leizhou, Hakka and Hainan clans, it was mostly comprised of merchants and artisans. This was the largest Chinese community in Malacca at that time. While the community today is no longer as bustling as before, many have moved out in towards the city centre. They leave behind buildings decrepit and empty. Despite the decreasing population, however, there are still signs of life. Whether it is the hustle and bustle of the daily wet market, the local liquor industry, or even just the local cats, Bukit China still exhibits a charm unlike no other. These three available sites are located on Bukit China as well as in the town. Pedestrian circulation to these three locations are relatively light, with the only dense areas highlighted in red. These pedestrians vary by age and location. Site 1 and 2 are located on Bukit China, and there are four points of access on this mountain, though of these, only the main entrance is frequently used. These two sites are relatively close to one another, with Site 1 being on the topmost point of the hill, Bukit Tinggi, and Site 2 only a hundred meters away, nearer to the community hall down below. Site 1 features a clear open ground with great panoramic views, facing east and west to the city below. It is also pretty windy, with gusts of wind blowing primarily from the southwest. However, there are barely any trees, thus it gets uncomfortable during the day, with the sun rising here and also setting here. Existing structures include two tombs, of which one interestingly isn't for a person, but for a corporation and also an information board. 
noise levels on a normal are very low throughout the day, with the only noticeable sounds being the birds chirping and conversations between isolated pockets of people. This site is important for the community of Bukit China due to it being the site where, twice annually, an event celebrating the first point of Chinese contact in Malaysia is held. During this event, large amounts of people would come to commemorate the historical significance of this hill. During this time, as well as all other times, the majority of the users here would be of Chinese descent and are of varying ages, from children to senior citizens. Most people come here for recreation and the site is a popular jogging destination. Located around 100 meters away from Site 1, Site 2 doesn't enjoy the good views that Site 1 has. It is a lot lower in elevation and is in near proximity to a primary school's cafeteria. Like Site 1, it is also on a flat plain with not many trees around it. The main views from this site include the surrounding trees, which provide a sense of intimacy and calmness, as well as the cafeteria below. Wind here is significantly decreased, with most winds being, once again, blown from the southwest. As there are no trees directly on the site, it could get very hot during the middle of the day, though it is partially shaded from the north and south. There are no existing structures on the site itself, although there is a primary school cafeteria located a mere 20 meters away from the site. Noise levels, unlike Site 1, is higher, with chatter from people as well as traffic noise both coming from the west. This site, while not having the same cultural prestige as Site 1, is still located close to the entrance of Bukit China and is within viewing distance from the primary school's cafeteria. This effectively makes it a landmark designating the beginning of the jogging trail leading up to Site 1. As with Site 1, the majority of the users here would be of Chinese descent and of varying ages. People near this site typically would be winded from their run or fresh and ready for some exercise. Unlike Site 1 and 2, Site 3 is situated in an urban context. Within the site boundary itself is Chinwu Athletic Association building, itself having historical significance. This building was built in the 1930s and has been educating the younger generation of this community for a long time. In addition, with its strategic location, it being at the entrance of Bukit China Road, it serves as both a physical and cultural landmark of the local community. The main views from this site are pre-war straight electric style shop houses. The location of this site, being at Jalan Bukit China, is home to a vibrant but aging community, and the architecture of the surroundings certainly reflect this. Wind here is non-existent, as the site is blocked on all sides by existing buildings. As vegetation save for vines and creepers do not exist, there is little if no sun shading at all during the morning and noon times of the day. Unlike Site 1 and 2, Site 3 exhibits vehicular circulation in the form of a nearby busy main road, Jalan Manshi Abdullah, as well as the moderately busy Bukit China Road. From these two places come the primary sources of noise, mostly of vehicular origin, although nearby chatter from businesses also factor in. As aforementioned, the existing CWAA marks this site as a vital part of the Bukit China community. To this day, wushu classes are still being conducted in this building, and youths can even be seen partaking in basketball games in the evening. The principal users here would be the youths, as well as the elderly from the Bukit China community, who frequently visit the adjacent coffee shops to reminisce on their youth. This small town brims with potential spaces to be developed, charming pockets of history to be innovated. Bukit China, the hill of the people, will forever be remembered as a symbol of tough tides, victories and memories.